dudes? What's happening, man? This is Trent. And, uh, you know, if you're making art books or comic books or anything for print, really, you're going to want to use InDesign. And you might be thinking, nah, I'll, I'll, dude, I'll just do all of my pages in Photoshop. And like, you know, you can adjust all your your text boxes and like move your move your images around, uh, you know, in Photoshop. But that's a mistake. <laughs> You should be using InDesign. And the reason for this is because you're going to get a lot more flexibility. You're going to get a lot more reuse out of things. For instance, uh, just as an example, if you're doing everything in Photoshop, then every page, if you have like a, a design element, like a background texture or something like that, you have to put that into every page. And then if you add text to something, like say you add a panel or you, you add more text to the scene, then you have to adjust every page that's after that in your flow so it ends up just becoming a nightmare don't don't make your life more difficult than it needs to be i'm going to break down all of the most essential information you're going to need in order to make art books in indesign okay so first of all one of the the nicest advantages is that when you have an object placed like this let's say that you have an image that you use for every chapter header for instance like this little fishy guy but let's say i want to change that you know uh for all of the chapters well because i copied and paid, pasted this layout into the next chapter intro here you see that it's using the same uh, image it's referencing from a file in a folder so if i change the the original for instance let's go back to the graphic and let's say that i change this image entirely like uh i don't know for instance let's uh let's make it like uh, gray and just so that you can see the uh the effect of what i'm doing i'm gonna draw like a big red dot on it and then save that now, if we go back to InDesign and I click on this little caution button here, it's going to update that. And it's going to update every time that that image is referenced as well. So here again, you see if I update it, every instance is updated. So that's going to save you a ton of time. The other factor is like this background image that is like a paper texture. Uh, that is it's that is another image that's copied and pasted. So I didn't have to put that into every PSD file. Uh, there's also other benefits of like, for instance, like this graphic here for my chapter header images. If I wanted to change that, if I decided nah, I don't want to go full bleed or I want to maybe modify the design of it a little bit, I can open up that file by going down to graphics, reveal in finder, and it'll show me where the source file is. If I edit that source file, it'll update every instance of that image. Okay, so that's a huge thing. That is a massive thing. Uh, because it means that I don't have to open up every individual PSD file for a chapter header and then change the graphic. You see where I'm going? You see how that saves you a ton of time? More really awesome things that you can do with InDesign. It's great for laying out your pages, seeing what pages are going to be facing each other. For instance, if you have a two page spread or if you have artwork that's facing each other, you can plan out like, oh, I know I'm going to need an uh, image there. So it's just a sketch for now. So I know it's going to take up that much space. And I know this is many how many pages I'm going to have in my whole book. Text boxes can have parameters set to them. So for instance, if you have like page numbers, you just create a, uh, a text box and then you, you give it the parameters to display the page number and it'll change the text to whatever page number it's on. Let's say that I move this to the next page, the same, the same text block, watch what happens. It updates to page 60 because it knows that it's page 60. Now, how does that happen? Well, you start by creating a text block. So you go up here to this, uh, this button right here and then you create a little text block, right? And then uh, once that's selected, you go up here to type go down to ins insert special character and set that as a marker for the current page number. I mean, bam, that updates to the current page number. You know, try doing that in Photoshop. In Photoshop, if you want page numbers, you have to go into every file individually and add the page number. And then if you add a new piece of artwork to chapter two or something, you gotta change all the page numbers for every file after that. Forget about it, forget about it. That's why my old books didn't have page numbers. So another thing that you can do is uh, you can put in images into your graphics or into your pages. And what's really nice about putting images in there is that you can actually set it up so that wherever you move this, the text wraps around it. And that means that, uh, for instance, I wouldn't have to go in and if I were doing this in Photoshop, I'd have to hit, like go to every page or every line here and then hit enter to make sure that it was ending that line here and not multiplying, not going over. Now this is magic, but it's gonna take a little bit of a setup. Don't you stress out, man, that's what I'm here for. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Start by dropping any old image into your page. Now it doesn't matter if it's a PSD. And you'll notice that like it doesn't really 
wrap around yet or anything like that. It just floats on top of the text because it's basically think of it like it's a layer, okay? But if I go up here to window and I go to text wrap, if you pull up your options here and then you click on this little button right here, wrap around object shape, it's going to use this frame as a, sort of a, a guide or an outline. And it won't allow the text to overlap the, the edges of the image. Now, let's say that I wanted the text to go up to the, the edges of the character in this scene. Then what I would do is go down here to the contour options and I would select alpha channel. And you see how now it wraps the text around the artwork. And you can actually make that a little bit thicker. So if you're like, well, the text still butts up a little too close to the character, you could set this to like 0.2 inches, for example. And then that creates a little bit more space as if, and you can kind of see a little bit of a faint blue outline here around the character that are around the artwork. It's creating an alpha channel and then it's creating a little buffer zone between the alpha channel and where the text could start. You could go a little bit further even, like 0.4 you really want to create a lot of space there okay and that what's nice about that is like wherever you move it it's going to just move the text around the outside but you do end up with this problem where sometimes like this doesn't work very well as a readable text so i don't usually do that usually i'll set this to the detect edges or bounding box just for cleanliness and i'll try to do it something more like that in fact i've been starting to do my pages uh, or all of my artwork more as like these boxes because it's just easier to work with in a sort of flowable text uh, situation. A few more things you're going to need to know about working with images is uh, this blue box is different than the yellow box inside and a lot of times what you're going to want to do is like you want to go to fitting here and then fit content proportionally and then that's gonna basically fit it into the blue box. Just think of it like you're creating a window and then the object is inside of the window. But if you want the object to fit into the window, you have to go to fitting and then adjust it. And you can uh, adjust it to stretch or skew, but usually you don't wanna distort it. With InDesign, you don't have to copy and paste every individual page. Uh-uh, buddy, you can have the entire book in linked text boxes. So I'm gonna to talk to you about how to link your text boxes. Like right here, we've got, look, look, uh, we've got all this text and if we add a bunch of stuff, it just, it ends up like at the bottom of the page and, and there's no way to like, why, why can't we just extend that text like into another text box down here, right? Well, there is, there is a way to do that and I'm gonna show you, watch. Uh, so let's say that we create a second text box here. Now, if we go over here to this little, this little uh, icon right here and we make sure that we're on that selection tool and we click on this, you see how the icon changes into something that looks like a little text extender? And then when we, move, when we mouse over this other text box, it actually changes into a chain link icon. And that means that we could link that text. So essentially by clicking on that, it extends down. So if we add any new text, as what's happening is, is as this is getting too big for itself, it overflows into the next part. And this is essential because especially if you want to have images over here, we put an image over here, you see how it bumps everything down? Well, it's going to move the text out of the way of the image based on all those text wrap parameters we set up on our image. This is a super useful, my whole book is in one big flowable text block that's just extending across pages. So I don't have to like retype anything, man. This is awesome. The last couple of things you're gonna to need to know are setting up your document settings. So you go to File, Document Setup, and make sure that whatever printer you're working with, that you're working with the proper dimensions. You set it up here. So if you wanna add uh, bleed, or if you wanna add margins, or things like that, you can set all that up here. And that's super useful, super helpful. That's what you get this little guide right here. Like this page should go all the way out. So if you have full bleed, for instance, if you have artwork that goes all the way to the edge of the page, you need to have that extra quarter inch bleed and uh, make sure that you fit content proportionally. There you go. Um, the other thing that you probably want to know is like if you want to add pages or remove pages. So you go to your page, uh, your page pagination layout. And from here you could, for instance, uh, delete pages, add pages or insert pages from this navigator. This is like your world map basically. And uh, yeah, so you could duplicate pages. So what I do is I make like a master template and then I duplicate that template across all of my pages. And that's why you see the same template in the same format. I didn't go through and 
like put every one of these text pieces here. No, I did like I did this once on one double page layout and then I scattered it across the whole thing. There are more advanced things that I haven't even really gotten to yet, such as like setting up your uh, your chapter pages or your chapter markers. You can actually set this text here to know what the chapter chapter marker is. So if you add four more pages, it updates your table of contents to have the, the data. This is like programming for graphic design, for books, it's amazing. So anyway, those are the most essential key tips that you're gonna need to know if you're doing art books or illustrated novels or even comic books, man. I wish to God that somebody would have made a video like this when I was starting to do this. Oh my gosh. Like I wasted so much time doing it the wrong way. So hopefully I just saved you a ton of time, heartache and headache uh, where you can focus on making better books, making better art, better content, and you don't have to worry so much about the formatting. The other option is, of course, yeah, if you've got the money, hire somebody to do this, but they're just going to research my video. So anyway, dudes, thank you so much for stopping by. If you want to learn more about the secrets of Kung Fulio, this is a PDF that you can download right now on my Gumroad channel, or you can pre-order it on Amazon Kindle. It's coming out at the end of October. It'll be totally done. The next few videos that I've got are updating the artwork and giving you a little bit more insight into the making of an illustrated novel. So dudes, until next time, I'll catch y'all. Manya on the bonnet. Ciao, baby. Oh yeah.